So, we are in uh, limiting distributions model. In this model, we have already discussed uh, modes of convergence. In that, we have discussed uh, four different uh, modes of convergence. First one is convergence in uh, distribution, convergence in probability, convergence in uh, earth moment, convergence almost surely. In this lecture, we are going to discuss uh, law of large numbers. In that, uh, we are going to discuss uh, two types of uh, law of large numbers. One is called uh, weak law of large numbers. Then later, we are going to discuss a uh, strong law of large numbers. Let me give the definition of a weak law of large numbers as a theorem. Let x1, x2 and so on, xn and so on be a sequence of IID random variables with the mean mu and finite variance sigma square. That means, uh, this sequence of random variable has uh, at least a second order moments. Then, for any epsilon greater than 0, we have probability of absolute of x 1 plus x 2 plus dot 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 plus x n divided by n minus mu greater than epsilon. This probability is always less than or equal to sigma square divided by n epsilon square. Also, limit n tends to infinity probability of the event that is absolute of x 1 plus x 2 plus so on plus x n divided by n minus mu which is greater than epsilon this becomes 0 as n tends to infinity. Then we say that uh, this sequence uh, obeys weak law of large numbers. Here large numbers means uh, the sequence of random variables. When you have uh, many random variables and the, if you create uh, sum of random variables divided by n minus the mean in absolute sense greater than epsilon, the probability of that event will tends to 0. That is what uh, this weak law of large numbers says. For that, uh, you need a sequence of random variable should have a uh, at least second order moment. That means, uh, mean exists as well as the variance exists and we made the assumptions those random variables are IAD random variables. That means, uh, independent and identically distributed random variable. Therefore, the means are going to be same and the variance is going to be same. Then for any epsilon, you can have a limit n tends to infinity probability of a event in absolute sense uh, summation divided by n. That is nothing but uh, x bar which we have denoted earlier minus mu which is greater than epsilon is equal to 0. If this condition is satisfied, then we can conclude 
this sequence of random variable obeys a weak law of large numbers. Why it is called a weak law of large numbers? Because if you see the different modes of convergence, you can conclude if I make a notation x bar is equal to x 1 plus x 2 and so on plus x n by n. This result is nothing but a limit n tends to infinity probability of uh, in absolute sense x bar minus mu greater than epsilon that is equal to 0. If you see the definition of uh, different modes of convergence, this is nothing but x bar converges to mu in probability. So, since uh, here the convergence uh, in probability we call it as a this sequence of random variable obeys a weak law of large numbers. Whereas, uh, when we are discussing a uh, strong law of uh, large numbers, those sequence of random variables convergence to the some random variable and convergence in almost surely that is a strong law of large numbers. Whereas, uh, this one satisfies uh, convergence in probability therefore, it is called a weak law of large numbers. We are not going to give the proof of this whereas, uh, we are going for uh, one uh, Bernoulli law of large numbers that is a special case of the weak law of large numbers for that we will provide the proof. That is the next theorem that is uh, Bernoulli. Bernoulli's law of large number, large numbers. Let x1, x2 and so on be a sequence of IAD random variables having a Bernoulli distribution with the parameter p. Then for any epsilon greater than 0, we have probability of absolute of uh, x 1 plus x 2 dot 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 plus x n divided by n minus p which is greater than epsilon this probability of event is always less than or equal to 1 divided by 4 times n epsilon square. This is a special case of the earlier theorem. If you see the earlier theorem, the weak law of large numbers, we have a sequence of IAD random variables with the mean mu and the finite variance. Then we concluded as n tends to infinity the x bar converges to mu and convergence takes place in probability. In the Bernoulli's law of large numbers, in addition to the previous theorem, we have introduced the distribution of each random variable that is Bernoulli distribution with the parameter p. We are going to give the proof of this theorem as follows. Consider an event A whose probability is probability of A is P, where A is the success in each Bernoulli trial. A is the event in each Bernoulli trial and the P of A, the P is nothing but a probability of success in each Bernoulli trial.
since uh, each x i's are Bernoulli distributed, therefore, the probability of x i takes a value 1 that probability is uh, that is p of a that is the event that is probability is p and the probability of uh, x i takes a value 0 that is 1 minus p. This is for i is equal to 1, 2 and so on. So, if you define a random variable x bar that is nothing but 1 divided by n summation of x i's. we can find uh, mean and uh, variance of uh, this random variable. The mean of this random variable is 1 divided by n and uh, summation of i is equal to 1 to n mean of each random variables. Each one is Bernoulli distributed therefore, the mean is going to be p therefore, uh, summation of uh, n p therefore, uh, divided by n therefore, it is going to be p. If you find out the variance of x bar that is nothing but 1 divided by n square all are iid random variables therefore, it is summation i is equal to 1 to n variance of x i is. Variance of x i is a sigma square therefore, it is going to be n sigma square when you make a summation. So, it is going to be sigma square by n. So, we got the mean and uh, variance for the x bar. Now, we may not know the distribution of x bar whereas, uh, we know the mean and variance of x bar therefore, we can apply the Chepsi's inequality. Apply Chepsi's inequality for the random variable x bar. So, what the inequality says the probability of in absolute sense x bar minus their mean which is greater than or equal to epsilon that is less than or equal to variance of x bar divided by epsilon square, but just now we got uh, variance of uh, x bar is sigma square by n. Therefore, uh, the probability of absolute of x bar minus p which is greater than or equal to epsilon that is going to be less than or equal to sigma square by n epsilon square. That means, uh, the tail probability of uh, x bar minus p that tail probability has the upper bound sigma square by n epsilon square or we can write the probability of the x bar minus p which is less than epsilon that has the lower bound 1 minus sigma square by n epsilon square. Since, p is uh, sigma square is uh, p into 1 minus p therefore, it is p into 1 minus p divided by n. Therefore, uh, here also I can do the simplification where variance of uh, that is uh, p into 1 minus p. by applying the Chepsi's inequality probability of the event in absolute x bar minus p greater than or equal to epsilon is less than or equal to variance of x bar divided by epsilon square. We know that uh, each x i's are Bernoulli distributed and the variance of x bar is going to be p into 1 minus p divided by n times epsilon square or the probability of absolute of x bar minus p less than epsilon is going to be have a greater than 1 minus p into 1 minus p n epsilon square. Here also we can go for as a n tends to infinity 
the limit n tends to infinity probability of absolute of uh, x bar minus p which is greater than or equal to epsilon that is going to be 0. That means, uh, the x bar tends to p convergence in probability. That means, uh, for a larger n for a Bernoulli distributed random variable x bar 1 divided by n summation of x i is nothing but the relative frequency. So, the relative frequency converges to the theoretical probability. That is the theoretical probability. If you have a independent Bernoulli trials, for a finite n, the relative frequency may deviate from the theoretical probability, but for a larger n, the, the relative frequency will converge to the theoretical probability and that convergence takes place in probability. Let us go for uh, one simple problem, how to use the Bernoulli law of large numbers. as an example. The random experiment is uh, rolling a uh, yeah, dice. For simplicity, we assume that it is a fair dice. A event A is uh, getting a number 5. Getting number 5. Event A is nothing but the getting a number 5. We are repeatedly rolling a dice countably infinite number of times and the question is for a given for a given epsilon that is 0 0.01 what is the minimum minimum number of Bernoulli trials such that the probability of absolute of x bar minus p which is lesser than epsilon is going to be greater than 0.95. The random experiment is uh, rolling a dice countably infinite number of times. The event A is uh, getting a number 5 in each Bernoulli trial. The question is for a given epsilon, what is the minimum number of Bernoulli trials such that probability of absolute of x bar minus p which is less than epsilon is greater than 0.95. That means, a minimum how many number of times we have to roll a dice for getting a minimum probability of 0.95 within the length of epsilon which is deviated from the p. For this problem, the p is nothing but the probability of success of a event A that is getting a number 5 in each Bernoulli trial that is a 1 out of 6. I made it a fair dice therefore, it is 1 by 6 that is p. So, we know p and uh, we know the value of epsilon therefore, you apply in the Bernoulli law of large numbers because uh, we have IAD uh, random variables which are having a Bernoulli distributed with the probability of success p is 1 by 6. So, the question is a sort of a reverse uh, problem, inverse problem finding the n such that this condition is satisfied. That means, uh, probability of absolute of x bar 
minus 1 by 6 lesser than epsilon, epsilon is 0 0.01, this has to be greater than 0.95. If you simplify your x bar is here that is x 1 plus 1 plus x n by n. Therefore, if you compare uh, this with the, the definition of probability of x bar minus p lesser than epsilon that is going to be greater than 1 minus p into 1 minus p n epsilon square. So, now you compare uh, equation number 1 with the 2. Compare uh, 1 and 2, we get uh, n should be greater than or equal to p times 1 minus p divided by 0 0.05 into 0 0.01 the whole square, where p is uh, 1 by 6. If you simplify, you will get 27,778. We are finding the nearest positive integer. That means that the n has to be minimum 27,778 value. That means that if you roll a dice minimum 27,778 times, we are going to attain the relative frequency deviation from 1 by 6 with the length of 0 0.01 probability of this event is going to be minimum point or the probability of this event is at least 0.95. So, for that the number of trials are needed is minimum 27,778. Now, we will move into the second law of large numbers that is a strong law of large numbers. Let me give the definition in the form of a theorem. Let x 1, x 2 and so on be a sequence of i a d random variables with the finite mean, mu and finite variance sigma square. Then x 1 plus x 2 and so on plus x n divided by n will converge to mu almost surely. We can define x 1 plus x 2 plus x n divided by n as a x bar. So, x bar if I define x bar as a this x bar converges to mu almost surely, where x bar is x 1 plus x 2 plus x n by n. That means, if you have a sequence of random variables all are i a d having a at least a second order moments, then adding all those random variables divided by n that is nothing but the average of uh, n random variables converges to the mean of uh, this random variable that is mu and that convergence takes place in uh, 
almost surely that means uh, probability of the limit n tends to infinity of a x bar is equal to mu that is equal to 1. Limit n tends to infinity x bar is equal to mu that is equal to 1. That means, uh, if you collect uh, possible outcomes in which x bar of w is uh, tends to mu and if you collect those possible outcomes whose uh, probability put together is going to be 1. Then we can conclude uh, x bar uh, converges to mu almost surely. So, without proof uh, we are uh, giving the strong law of large numbers and why the word strong law of large number is uh, here the convergence in almost surely that is the strongest one whereas the weak law of large numbers involves convergence in probability that is a weak law of large numbers whereas the convergence in almost surely that is going to be called as a strong law of large numbers.